Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. If you don't know me, I'm Wayne Tunbridge, and this is my boss. <laughs> I thought I'd said that to myself, but obviously not. This is my wife. This is Jane. And we are parents to three lovely children. Uh, Sean, who's 19, who has Angelman syndrome. Sammy, who's 16, and Katie, who's 13. And we'd like to share with you uh, our journey as Team Sean. We'd like to thank the organisers for thinking of us. Our story, or how we have chosen to take this journey, is a very seriously edited edition because to cram it into 15 minutes was very hard. Um, we're not experts in this field, we're just parents. Okay, before we start, obviously, what is Angelman syndrome and what we usually know it as AS, it's easier to say. Uh, and this bit, I'm going to read from this book, so like Jane says, we're not scientists. Uh, AS is a rare neurogenetic disorder that affects approximately, approximately between one in 15,000 individuals, and they believe there's approximately about half a million throughout the world. Uh, individuals with AS have poor motor, multi, sorry, poor motor coordination uh, and suffer from seizures. Uh, the majority don't walk, don't talk, and um, there is serious disruptive sleep pattern cycles which affect the individual with AS and their carers. They require continuous care and able to live independently, have normal life expectancy. It attacks the nervous system, causing severe physical and intellectual disability. AS affects every race, both genders, but is often misdiagnosed as autism or cerebral palsy. Distinct behavioural traits include a happy demeanour, characterised by frequent laughter, excitability, smiling, everything that people know Sean, he ticks that box about ten times. AS is a single gene disorder, this bit I'm going to read, caused by a loss of the function in the UBE3A gene on the maternal 15th chromosome. There are four types of AS, but 70% of most AS cases is missing a piece of the DNA from chromosome 15, and that type of AS is known as deletion. Well, Sean knew how to make an entrance from minute one. He was born on Christmas Eve in 1998. Not that I'm biased, but he was the almost angelical. He was a beautiful baby. Blonde hair, blue eyes, and those dimples. Angelical is a perfect way to describe Sean, because at the time, we didn't know we had an angel in our path. In early February 2000, Sean, now 14 months, started having head drops. Within days, we were admitted to the Materno Infantil Hospital in Malaga, where we spent six long weeks. Sean had up to 30 seizures a day. Until the correct meds were found, there was anything we could do. On the 16th of February was the day that time stood still for us. After confirmation, Sean was epileptic. Specialized genetic testing confirmed he had a very rare condition called Angelman syndrome. The doctors told us to be strong for the challenges he would face, as his condition was a game changer. Like every parent, all you want is the best for your children. So when you're told that your child will never walk, will never talk, will never live independently, and will be severely mentally disabled, mentally and physically disabled, it was heartbreaking. It was also a kick in the beep, <laughs> but we won't go into that. You automatically think of all the things your child is not going to do, all the things that as new parents that we've all done, all those dreams and those aspirations and plans, they just go like that in the blink of an eye, and that's, that's what happened then. At the time, the Spanish doctors had a belief and told us everything up front, and they were very, very strong in the way they said it to us, and very clinical, and at the time we questioned it, oh, what the heck, can they tell us something a bit better than that? Um, but with hindsight, we looked back and were so glad that they said it to us like that. I found myself at that time, at the beginning, there in a dark place. Big rugby playing, beer drinking, all you can eat policemen. Not a problem. It was. I had someone, to, I had to, I wanted to know why. We both need to know why. We all need to know why. We had to blame, I wanted to blame someone. But over a very short period of time, we realised there was absolutely no one to blame. And the most important thing to do was get our head straight and realised what we had to do. The thing is, Sean had not changed. Everything else had. But the, he was still this happy, blonde, beautiful baby that without realising at this early stage, both of us had changed forever. The feeling of isolation at the time of diagnosis is almost universal amongst parents, and for us, it was no different. Locally, the medical professions, unfortunately, couldn't help us. They had never treated AS, 
and there was no record of AS in Gibraltar before. So who could we talk to? I needed to talk to someone. So within a month, we were sent to Great Ormond Street Children's Hospital, where the initial AS deletion was confirmed. We knew that it wasn't going to change. But whilst we were in the UK, we got in contact with Sally Walburn. She was the head of the um, ASSERT group, which is AS Support Education and Research Trust. She was the mother to Matthew. Matthew at the time was eight. So off we went to visit her and Matthew at home. And this was the first time we actually came face to face with the child with Angelman syndrome. That day was heartbreaking. But it gave us an idea of what the future would hold. Okay, within, within a couple of months, lucky enough, there was the first world conference in Finland in July. So we all went. Uh, we met new parents there and we came back with like a draft, draft plan of what we could do in the future. Uh, within a couple of months again in October, we both travelled to Houston in Texas for um, the AS American Foundation who held us a, a conference specifically for parents like us who had just been newly diagnosed. And the most important part of that, that whole conference was we were in a room very similar to this and a lecturer came on the stage and said within a couple of years 60% of everyone here would be divorced. We looked at each other like everyone else, we laughed it off, yeah, that won't happen to us. Well, we look back now, and actually was right, and we know that, that the majority of families, that is an extra stress. But obviously after 17 years from that lecture, we're still married. Sorry a minute, happily married. <laughs> So we only had one choice. We had to embrace that this was our life for now. Taking each day as it came became our motto, and it still is. Rather than be negative, which didn't help anyone, we had to be positive, which we clearly, quickly realized it was easier said than done. Sean went straight into St. Martin's Nursery and then onto the school. He had a wonderful time. He was very sociable, and he interacted with everything, everyone, being his teachers, aides, or his nemesis, the physios. <laughs> Lack, sorry, sleep or lack of has been a continuous problem since Sean's birth. Falling asleep and remaining became a daily adventure, or more like a nightmare, even with medication and several medications. A normal night's sleep was a maximum of three or four hours, and usually not in one stretch. Once the other children were on the scene, we agreed that Wayne would deal with Sean's needs at night and I would take over with the other two, but he still had to go to work the next day. This lasted for roughly 15 years. This really did push us to our limits and our relationship was truly tested. However, when Sean reached puberty, it just hit us without warning. The nights of absolutely no sleep all became a norm. It was really tough. Putting that to one side. With persuasion, with perseverance, Sean slept to learn how to sleep in his bed without bed guards. Uh, and hardly falls out now. Um, he snores like me, which is not good, <laughs> and loves sleeping at the weekends like we all do. However, those sleepless nights still pop up every so often. But however, like, like all kids, like all our children, um, he gets ill. But the only problem, he can't tell us when he's ill. So we've got to be on top of those to see what, how he's feeling and if there's a trigger. Which isn't helped also by the, the fact that he has a really high th pain threshold. It doesn't help. But obviously, because of those illnesses, we've had to visit Rainbow Ward at St. Bernard's numerous times. Uh, and just general normal things like a dental checkup, he has to go under a general anesthetic, which isn't, which isn't great. And you can imagine x rays, blood tests are so much fun for us, it is unbelievable. Sean's had so many x rays, but I think I've had more parts of my body x rayed than his. Okay. We always wanted Sean to have siblings, but could it happen again? Could we cope? We knew, though, that it was the best choice. We needed it for Sean's development. Sammy and Katie's pregnancies were tough, were intense, as emotional as they both genetically tested at 12 weeks. Waiting for those results seemed an eternity. Once old enough, we did explain to Sammy and Katie everything, and their strong bond with Sean has molded them into who they are today. No task has been too much whenever we've needed them to help us with, with, with Sean, but it's a shame that they're not as helpful when they need to tidy up their bedrooms. <laughs> During the early years with three toddlers and AS, my life was utterly chaotic. With trying to cope with everything, it, I probably did seem like I was mad. Most days I'd rush out without even brushing my hair, but it was the right thing to do for us as a family on so many levels. 
Obviously, sports has been very important in our life. Sammy plays a lot of basketball, and Katie, luckily last year, was selected for the Island Games to take part in the swimming team. So that uh, they're both very, very patriotic, always fly the flag, and always know that their brother's always on the sideline cheering them on. It really does make us proud. We always knew that the older Sean got, um, we needed to, to fly with him, and we wanted to take him to see Mickey Mouse was a must. So we always set off to go and see Mickey Mouse, and Sean absolutely loved being in America. He was treated like a rock star, got whisked in VIP, skipped the queues. The only thing he didn't like, the, well, he didn't like going with the cousins to see, and the sister to see the princesses, but he loved the roller coaster. The faster, the higher, the better. That was him, he absolutely loved it. But it's not always been just theme parks when we've gone to America. Uh, in 2012, we visited the, the le world's leading lab in relation to AS research uh, at the University of South Tampa, uh, South Florida, sorry, in Tampa, where we met Dr. Edwin Weber and his staff. We visited his lab, he gave us a pres private presentation, and like Gujanitos, we fed him till he burst. <laughs> Highlights for me and things I, I've done because of Sean. One, we set up the charity with two other mums, um, Little Smiles Charity. And that's just gone strength to strength, which I am really proud of. Um, another thing I have, although I've never been, but I have become a bit of a runner. And when Sean um, turned 18, I knew I wanted to do something big. And as Wayne said, I was a bit bonkers. I thought, no, I've got to go ahead. And I decided to run the London Marathon, and I finished it last year. Not only did I finish, I managed to raise over 14,000 pounds, which, you know, thank you. It was quite really emotional just crossing the finishing line and knowing that, you know, these two charities were benefiting them. Um, you can't listen. Sorry. We also, there's people that have been affected through our family and Sean, and we have to mention Emma Lyon. She is the daughter of Paul and Shruti, um, and in 2010, she was doing the Duke of Edinburgh Award Scheme. She had to offer a service, and she volunteered to come and help us with Sean every Saturday. We went swimming, so she would come. Sean loved her so much, and she interacted so well with him that it continued for two more years. Um, Emma, which I, another thing I'm really proud of, is studying special needs now in university. So, you know, we've, he, the way that he's actually changed every, you know, her life is, is amazing. Then we go to a, an organization called FAST. FAST is the Foundation of Angelman Syndrome Therapeutics, and it was founded in 2008 in the USA. And its mission is to cure AS. Uh, and at the moment, it's the world's largest non-governmental funder of AS research. And in the last eight years, they've raised up to $20 million bringing together scientists and pharmacists from around the world. We were automatically drawn towards this organisation. We wanted to meet these people who had the guts to stand up and, uh, and be counted and try and find a cure. So we did. That's what we did. So since 2010, either ourselves or my parents have gone to the yearly conference in Chicago, uh, which is a scientific conference and a gala that has about 1,500 participants, uh, and it's really brought us into that organisation. Um, we jumped in it like usual head first and we're now personal friends with FAST Chairperson America and the FAST Australian um, Association. Both of those women are also are vertically challenged women as well. <laughs> Sean has made me a better person. Before AS I was quite shy and private, believe it or not. Um, but as Sean's mum I've had to be his voice. I, however, I still live in the hope that one day I might hear his voice. <laughs> you carry on. Sorry. Sorry. I'd love to hear him say, Mum, I love you. Though our journey has been really difficult, I've always been grateful because yeah, when we're in hospital, we see other, you know, other cases and it could be a lot worse. So we are grateful for what we have. So, journey certainly hasn't been a bed of roses for us. And on my part, I can say the pressures of trying to do the best for Jane and the children at work trying to develop my career uh, has been difficult. <laughs> that wasn't me. <made> <laughs> um, people comment that we always seem very positive, we're smiling, we're laughing, but that comes at a cost, comes at a price. I don't mean the visa, so it comes at a price. Uh, buckets of stress and tears and a lot of them. Um, I took time off work and I've seen him in the crowd. Henry, thank you. Thank you. Took time off work, got my head together, got counselling, and we're a better place now. 
We have to admit, stress will always be for us. We're never going to get away from stress. It's how we manage it, which is important, so it doesn't affect us and our children. The future, what will the children for the future bring? Well, we, we believe fast, uh, looking for a cure. Whatever a cure is, we'll have to see what it is. But if it just improves Sean's life, and thus by improving his life, our lives, by just that little percentage, we'll be in a better place than we are now. I want to take this opportunity to thank my neighbours, because we must be really scary neighbours, because Sean makes so much noise. And, you know, the people around us and below us, um, even I can hear Sean from downstairs, and we live on a top floor, so you can imagine what it's like living with us. Um, my in-laws, because they read everything scientifically for me, because I haven't got the time, and then they just break it down and make it simple for me to understand what's going on. Um, there you go. I'm going to get to the very last bit before... Julian sends out group five to kick us off. Um, <laughs> closing message to everyone here is, never give up, never get up. There's only one direction, that's forward, and always forward. Um, we've spoken about a few different people, so I think it's only fair that you get to meet the rest of the inner circle of Team Sean. Go. <laughs> All I can say is if you do see Sean downtown, just say hello to him. He'd love it. He told me he would. Well, thank you.